There's a live look at JSU Stadium, Burgess Snowfield on the campus of Jacksonville State University. The second of eight games is in the books. Game number three here at the TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge about to get underway. You see the captains meeting at midfield. Another big 1A matchup coming up as the Donahoe Falcons take on the Wadley Bulldogs. John Holder and Tommy Wood. Tommy will be joining us for the first time here at the uh, all the spring action we've had at JSU. Tommy, welcome in. Glad to have you with us. And Tommy will be doing the play-by-play -play for this next game. It should be a uh, interesting matchup between Donahoe and Wadley. A uh, well, chance to see Donahoe's Justin Foster. Hearing a lot about him in the offseason. Yeah, a lot of good talent coming back for Donahoe. They got uh, four or five guys that are back uh, that were all county selections last year. Going to be a very interesting matchup. You look at Wadley, kind of a rebuilding process. Uh, they went four and seven last year, but that was improving from the year before. Uh, Wadley still trying to make the uh, the headway and get that turn and get in the postseason again. Yeah, both teams were playoff teams last year in Class 1A, and so I think some excitement there as far as uh, seeing this Waterley program continue to build under Ken Fordham, and of course uh, they've done a fantastic job up at 10th Street Mountain at Donahoe with Shannon Felder over the last decade or so. They've had such great football teams up there, including last season when they were the region runner-up in a nine-team region, and it looks like they've got a nice team coming back again at Donahoe. Well, and you look at that. that. That goes a long way in talking about stability. You've got uh, Shannon Felder entering his 11th season. Coach Fordham uh, really after a couple of uh, coaching carousel moves in Wadley after Randy Sparks had spent so many years there. They have now found a way to continue uh, to get that tradition going back again at Wadley and turn things around. We'll take a break and we come back. We'll have the opening play, not a kickoff, but the opening play of Donahoe and Wadley here at the TD24 Regional Gridiron Challenge. We're making a new Honda at Sunny King Honda more affordable than ever with low, low lease payments all month long. Lease the new 14 Accord LX for only $199 a month. Lease the all-new 14 Civic LX for only $159 a month. Lease the CRV LX two-wheel drive for only $209 a month. We have a great selection of certified used Hondas, all with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Sunny King Honda exit 188 off Interstate 20, where customer satisfaction is king. At RMC, we know the birth of a baby can be a great moment in your life. With two hospitals in Northeast Alabama, RMC has great care right in your backyard. Our OB suites have the amenities that you deserve, and we have a level two special care nursery staffed 24 seven. Our experienced OB physicians work hand in hand with our specially trained nurses. We have the only baby friendly designated hospital in Alabama. It's not about the size of the nursery, it's about the quality of the care. And welcome back, Burgess Snowfield, Jacksonville State University, Tommy Wood, John Holder, about to get things underway here. Class 1A matchup here in the TV24 Gridiron Challenge. Donahoe football to open it up. Takes a snap, flips it on the outside. The catch is made out here and uh, out across the 35 37 yard line. And on the carry that time, number 21. And uh, as you might expect, uh, we'll be struggling because we don't have a 21 on our roster. First play, and there we go. We do have sunshine, though, which we didn't have earlier. The uh, Coosa Christian game earlier with Raglan. We had rain heavy throughout that whole game, but we've got plenty of sunshine here. And it looks like we're going to be sunny the rest of the way here, and maybe rain free for the rest of this Green Iron Challenge. Trey Brown flips it on the outside. Good catch made out there, and getting a, a loss on the play of a couple, but a good looking young man out there. And that is Justin Foster. And you can tell he is a load. Again, you look at the offensive line there. Nelson along with Kaplan, Ulrey, as well as Morgan and McWilliams across the front line. Wideouts Baker and Martin along with Garrett Steed at running back. And, of course, Von uh, Myrick as well as Justin Foster and at quarterback Troy Brown. As he will get the start. Third down here and about uh, six and a half yards to go. Shotgun set. It's Brown... Sends Foster in motion and gives it off on the right side. And he has nowhere to go. The defense from Watley stepping up. Big hit in there, number 34. And that is Avery for Watley. He gets the stop there. Looking at your defensive front of Luke Brown, Chris Hodges, as well as Jerry Dye, Keyshawn Daniel, and John David Fordham. Linebacking core of Jeffrey Brown, Kamari Avery, and Quayo Drake. And the defensive backfield, Freeman, along with Brown, and none for the Watley Bulldogs. No punting in this game, so uh, after the third down stop, it will turn it over, and the Wadley offense will take the field. Again, kicking game not live today. 
Teams, of course, uh, have the option of kicking field goals and extra points as well as punt with no rush. But uh, Donahoe says, let's just move it forward. And uh, that punt will move the football back inside Wadley territory. We'll place it at the 37 going right to left. All possessions will start at the 30-yard line after scores, and then all the punts will be exactly 30 yards with so a 30-yard punt. And here comes Waterloo with their first offensive possession inside their own 40. Opening up in the eye, a little bobble on the snap, then a handoff to the big tailback, and he has nowhere to go but shakes loose and breaks a tackle to the 45 midfield before he's chopped down. A huge gain after a big-time run, and that is Kamari Avery. And I'm going to tell you, you tell at the beginning there, when he comes up there, John, he is met at the line, but keeps the legs churning, able to slip a tackle and bounce it out left side for a good first down. We saw Avery last year, uh, last year at the Donahoe Jamboree right here, and we were impressed by this young man. He's even bigger and more physically imposing this year. Looks like he comes in at about 225, 230 exactly. pounds. Split outs either way, though. Quick hitch on the outside. The catch is made, trying to bounce it outside across the 40 and close to first down yardage. Looks like he'll be shy. That is Shepard on the reception. Check that. Kobe Nunn on the reception. Picks up about nine. And we'll take a look at the offensive starters for the Wadley Bulldogs. You got John David Fordham along with Ethan Howard, Jerry Dye, Keyshawn Daniel, and Caleb Presnell. That is on the front line. Wideouts of Freeman and Dakota Brown. Kobe Nunn we just saw there. And the backfield of Drake. Avery and your quarterback Connor Fordham. High backfield again for the Bulldogs. Hand up up the middle and looks like first down yardage to the 35 yard line. Good defensive play there though. Submarining and uh, chopping him down as soon as he takes the football. But again that front line doing it as we take a look at those starters. You got Nelson Foster Allen Kaplan and Montgomery for the Falcons and a linebacking core of Morgan Garner and Martin and in the secondary Myrick as well as Garrett Steed and Thomas Conley. First down, 10 yards to go for the Wadley Bulldogs. Two split outs right. One will come to the left. Fordham's pitch on the outside is caught. Good catch out there across the 30-25 and another first down. Great reception out there by Dakota Brown as the defender almost got a hand on that, John, but uh, able to slip through there. And a good catch and run after the catch. Good play on the uh, first offense, or should, on this first possession. It's been a great series and a great drive by Wadley here as they've steadily moved the ball down the field inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. And, Tom, we're going to see two of the best running backs in 1A football anywhere talking about Kamara Avery of Wadley and Justin Foster of Donahoe. Quick pitch on the outside, this time a little high. Try to hit Freeman out here on the boundary, but... Uh, Shoots a little high, brings up second down at 10. But, yeah, I am very impressed uh, with Avery already. Uh, I tell you, the legs on that guy, you can tell he is a power runner from the word go. You know, Avery is a guy that uh, kind of broke into the scene last year, had a good season last year, and he's even bigger and stronger as we pointed out. And it looks like, you know, obviously Donahoe kind of looking for him. They've used him for most of this drive as kind of a decoy. Had that big play on the first uh, play of the game but since that time they've tried to use some screens but now they go back to the big guy and he will hit at the line bounce through break another tackle a third tackle inside the 15 turning the legs down to about the 12. You know, my we, oh my he's hard to bring down you know, we mentioned foster and avery being two of the best running backs in 1a football these two guys could play for anybody as a matter of fact we'll talk about this more as we go through the game but justin foster already being offered by a number of colleges and he's starting to get some sec looks as we understand and his stock has really risen in the spring during some of the combines he's been to he's going to go to a lot more of those combines this summer he may be a big time sec prospect before this 2014 season's over you see these two guys have plenty of talent this time Avery will split out to the right now change and come to the left side and a little confusion in the backfield for Wadley as the Bulldogs have it first down at 10 inside the 15 yard line they'll sweep it to the right side getting a block and being chopped down is Freeman on the carry as they just again moved Avery to the outside as a lead blocker on that play but Able to pick up a few. Let's see. Put it down inside the 10-yard line. So we'll call it a gain of about four. You know, talking about Foster, too, we see him playing linebacker there. He can play linebacker. He can play tight end. Certainly, he can play running backs. So we're going to see him playing today for Donahoe. Uh, of all the spring games we've had so far, this is the third one today. And we had uh, about... Uh, uh, the numerous games, I guess five other games we've had here in the previous two days. He's the finest looking athlete by far that we've seen in three days. Sweep it to the left side, trying to break a tackle inside the five and down to the one. That is Freeman again on the carry. It's going to be first and goal for the Wadley Bulldogs. Uh, uh, Freeman has been a guy that 
is a gives him that quick change of pace. He's the smaller, more slanty runner that gets those yards to the outside. And then we got the power runner with Avery. They've got that kind of thunder and lightning. We use that cliche again, but with Freeman and Avery, you've got the, the speed, small guy, and then you've got the big power back in Avery. And we may see him right here on this uh, first and goal with the two. You gotta like your chances if you give it to him, and you do, and he walks in the end zone. Touchdown, Wadley Bulldogs, and that is Avery from a yard out. You figure some colleges here in the coming years are going to be looking at Mr. Avery as well. Young player, but he just basically uh, some good offensive blocking that's up there. It. But you don't want to see that guy coming into the hole, that's for sure, if you're a defender. Great blocking up front, just sealing off that left side. And you see Avery just walk into the end zone. And looks like the extra point. Again, no rush from the defenders here. But on for the extra point is going to be Kobe Nunn. As Wadley under coach Ken Fordham takes a 6-0 lead here. 10-17. Left in our first. That kick is up, and that kick is good. 7-0. Bulldogs take the lead. Very impressive drive, John, to open it up. Basically a free kick there on the extra point with no rush and an impressive drive by the Wadley Bulldogs as we see Mr. Avery into the end zone for the touchdown and Wadley out to a quick 7-0 lead here at JSU. For an affordable private Christian education, choose Cusa Christian School in Gadsden. Cusa Christian offers a Bible-based biblical worldview curriculum for a solid spiritual foundation while also providing the highest standards in academics, activities, and athletics. Cusa Christian can accommodate your child from daycare through the 12th grade with 90% of our graduates going to college and 63% of them receiving scholarships. Plus, our nine athletic programs compete in the Alabama High School Athletic Association. For more information, call our office or visit online. Dive into some great deals this summer at Superior Hyundai and make a splash with Tires for Life. Superior Hyundai is offering you Tires for Life with every Superior Hyundai purchase. Superior Hyundai's already come with America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 mile powertrain, and now Tires for Life. Good credit, bad credit, we can get you approved. Don't wait, hurry into Superior Hyundai in Aniston or visit us on the web at superiorhyundaial.com and like us on Facebook. Donahoe possession here with 10-17 left in our first after uh, Wadley takes a 7-0 lead. Falcon football. And quarterback again is Brown. Shotgun set. Receivers two to either side as he'll take the snap. Leave it up the middle and not a whole lot of room there. Again, leading the charge is going to be Avery from that linebacker spot doing it on both sides of the ball, John. He, he's very similar to Justin Foster in the fact that he can play a variety of positions and we see him here at linebacker and he fills the gap very good against a very underrated player. One of the most underrated players I think in East Alabama in any classification is the running back for Donahoe, Ben Myrick. He's been a steady player for Coach Felder for the last couple of years. Not the biggest guy in the world, not the fastest guy in the world, but he's been very effective, made a lot of big plays for Donahoe over the last couple of seasons. Second down, about nine yards to go for the Falcons. Back to pass, rolling out is Brown. Flips it out here a little too high. Trying to find Foster out here in the flats and uh, unable to convert that. Nice good design play there. They brought Foster in motion, and as they brought him in motion, then he went out as a wide receiver at the snap. The pass just a little bit too far for him to track down, but that's a nicely designed play because anytime you can get Foster out there at about 235 or 240 pounds, one-on-one -on -one with a maybe 170-pound defensive back, that's a pretty good matchup for Donahoe. Unless you're the defensive back, and then it's <laughs> that's not <right>. quite <laughs> as desirable. Donahoe Wadley game brought to you by RMC, Superior Hyundai, as well as the County County Commission, Jackson Mortgage, and Alabama Power. I'm Tommy Wood along with John Holder. 7-0 our score. Wadley Bulldogs on top. Three split outs to the near side. Brown, shotgun, rolls out again, looking in the flats, dumps it off short. The catch is made. One man miss, but not the second. And he'll be shot, stopped for about a two-yard gain. And being brought down there is Garrett Steed. Nice uh, looking play by Steed. So he did a lot after the play. Nice catch, both hands, and then a couple of spin moves there and picked up a couple of extra yards. Nice looking play by Garrett Steed at wide receiver for the Donahoe Falcons. It is fourth down for the Falcons, and they are conversing with the officials, and I believe we will have our, uh, our second invisible punt of the uh, first half. 
And that will move it forward. So Donahoe will turn it over on down. So yet to pick up a first down are the Falcons. And uh, Wadley takes over second possession. I'll be impressed with a Wadley defense. Very active flying around. And now they're getting the ball back to their offense at about the 36-yard line. And that's been a uh, been a very, very good first couple of possessions, both offensively and defensively for the Wadley Bulldogs. After a rainy morning, we need some shoes like that to brighten up the uh, the day here at Snow Burgess Stadium. Split outs, two go to the right, one will come to the left for the Wadley Bulldogs. They lead 7-0. Fordham under center will take. Pitch it on the outside in a hurry. Catch is made and off to the races on the far side. He'll pick up 10, actually 12 yards. On the rush that time after the catch is none, and uh, he looks very elusive. Once he catches the pass out there, John, does a great job of breaking it to the outside and showing that speed. Some very nice weapons for Wadley on the offense. We mentioned Avery, but we've seen a couple of big plays by none. None that time doing a great job taking a little screen flare pass out there and then picking up some extra yards with it. Here comes Wadley again nearing the 50-yard line. And Dakota Brown out there, number four, you see on your screen there. Did great block to lead the way. Fordham back to pass again. Looking in the flats, whips it out here. The catch is made, but not a lot that time. That's going to be a big hit in there by Foster. Gain of maybe two as they try to get the man in the flats. Again, as we talked a little bit earlier, trying to get Foster out at about 220 pounds against a small defensive back. This time, the small receiver catches, turns around, and he's got Foster waiting on him. Yeah, there's, there's Ken Fordham, the head coach at at Wadley, a former head football coach at Beulah, spent some time over at Hanley, helping Mike Battles as an assistant, led the Bulldogs to the playoffs in his first season as head coach last year in 2013. Career record overall as a head coach of 34 and 40. I think he was maybe at Chambers Academy down in Lafayette as head coach as well. Been a lot of time, a native of Randolph County, does a great job. On the carry there, you see a big run again by Avery as he just carries defenders forward inside the 45-yard line. They'll mark him down at about the 43. Going to be shy of the first down. Brings up third and about a yard and a half. I tell you, I've been very impressed offensively by Wadley. They've had a nice play call there, and they've had a very, very, very nice uh, crisp execution today. We've seen a lot of good plays here by this Wadley offense. They look kind of in midseason form already. 7.08 remaining here in the first, 7-0. Hand off again. He's hit the backfield, but carries defenders forward for the first down. That is a tough two-yard gain for Mr. Avery. Uh, one thing we're seeing about Avery is you got to get two or three guys. you got to gang tackle this guy because especially at the 1A level, there's just not a lot of individual players one-on-one -on -one can take on a player like this guy. This guy is he's built low to the ground. Look at the legs on this young man. He is a stockily built guy, very muscular, but has a lot of speed as well, and he does a great job of keeping those legs moving. You know, you get in practice, and coaches always stress that about the running backs keep those legs moving. He's very well coached at doing that, and uh, he's a really great weapon for this Wadley Bulldog offense. They've got another nice drive going, another first down now at the Donahoe 40-yard line. Split outs, coot two will go to the right. Fordham pitches it back. Will change of pace there. Going to bounce it outside. Makes a man miss to the 35-yard line. Inside the 35 to the 33-yard line goes Buckhannon. Rikishi Buckhannon on that carry. Good run. Check that. That is Freeman. I'm, got my one and my three a little mixed up there. And uh, we, Shannon Felder, I think we'll see him uh, over there to the side there. Shannon Felder, seven playoff teams at Donahoe, former head coach at uh, Wilcox Central. And, of course, he's had uh, just a tremendous amount of uh, of great uh, teams at Donahoe over the years. 11th season coming up for the Falcons. Again, playoffs seven times, including the last four. And these two teams will face each other this fall, John. We'll talk about that momentarily. There you go. There you go. Little quarterback keeper to the left side. It's going nowhere. Tried to slip in none under center and just do a quarterback sweep. Uh, but great defensive play in there by the Falcons as they will come up big for the stop. Walton Montgomery with a stop there. And there we see Shannon Felder. Seven playoff teams at Donahoe. Of course, played for Ray Perkins at Alabama. Was a defensive back back in the mid-80s at the uh, University of Alabama. Former head coach before coming to Donahoe at Wilcox Central down in Camden, Alabama. And he has done a tremendous job. One of the more consistent programs, I think, in East Alabama, regardless of classification. Uh, he's had some of the most tremendous seasons in Donahoe history since he's been at the helm there. A real class act. And, uh, again, uh, Donahoe fortunate to have Shannon Felder at the helm again going uh, coming back this fall. Two split outs go right. Third and long for Wadley, and I believe they are going to take a timeout, John. 
And we've got a flag over there. It looks like maybe, I don't know if they got the timeout or delay of game. The 25 second play clock here at the stadium was down to zero, and that's thrown by the back judge there. That typically is in the area that you would think is delay of game, and that is indeed the call. So these are the kinds of things you expect in the spring. We've oh, yeah. seen really some crisp execution by Wadley so far. Really their first miscue as far as maybe a mental error goes. Coach Ken Fordham was uh, rushing up to the official, trying to call that timeout. Couldn't get it in before the five-yard penalty. So now third and long, something uh, that Wadley's not faced here in the early going as they have mostly had third and short. So Fordham going to flip it to the outside. It's incomplete. And that's going to be ruled a lateral or incomplete pass. They say it was going forward, so she'll bring up fourth down. Good defensive stand by Donahoe that time. They looked a little unsure of themselves in that first series, but now a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end and some nice defensive play there by the Donahoe Falcons. And they've got some big guys on that defensive front. Reeves Nelson at number 72 in there. You also look at J.R. Allen, Jake Kaplan, Walter Montgomery. A nice size front there for Donahoe. Parker Morgan, another big guy there. That's a pretty beefy 1A defensive line for the Falcons. You know, we have the opportunity to cover some 4A, 5A, and 6A folks that would love to have uh, lines like that. But again, uh, good beef up front for Donahoe. We've got a timeout. Wadley going to take a break and uh, talk about it. 4.55 left here in the first. 7 nothing. our score. Wadley on top. We'll come back with more here in the TV 24 Gridiron Challenge in just a moment. At RMC, we love serving people in the small towns of Northeast Alabama. The lifestyle, the food, the people. But make no mistake, there's nothing small about the care we provide. In fact, we're a member of the UAB Cancer Network and have the Blue Distinction Award for cardiac care and are rated in the top 5% in the country by the Commission on Cancer. It's not about the size of the town. It's not about the size of the town. It's not about the size of the town. It's about the strength of our regional health system. Excitement is in the air for Peggy Miller Walker, and it's all because she's running for circuit court judge in Calhoun and Cleveland counties. Peggy has always made public service a priority. So why not give her your vote on June the 3rd to meet the needs of families and children? Hi, I'm Peggy Miller Locker. I ask for your vote on June the 3rd. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of children and families in Calhoun and Cleveland counties. Paid for by the committee to elect Peggy Miller Locker. Coach Ken Fordham firing up his troops here. We've got fourth down at about 11 yards to go. And uh, I think at this point, you're going to go for it here, John. And uh, we've nothing to lose. Spring game, go for it on fourth and 11 inside Donahoe territory at the 41. Beautiful day here at Jacksonville. It did not start out that way, but it has turned out to be a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Fake it short, throw it long, and uh, incomplete. Someone appeared to have run the wrong route. It's incomplete. Turnover back to the Donahoe Falcons. And like you said, John, great defensive stand. Very good defense. Uh, totally different looking Donahoe team on defense from the first drive of the game. So they'll take over at the 41. And this will do two things. Not only stop that Wadley offense, but as we take a look at the replay here, is that could have very nearly been an interception. They actually wind up with better field position, though. But that's the point I was going to make. Very good field position here for Donahoe to start their second series, or actually their third series on offense. Freeman runs the fly there, and Fordham throws the slant, which is never a good combination. First down and 10. And movement all over the offensive interior, and that's going to cost the Falcons five. Had two in motion at the same time. Yeah, I was about to say that's illegal motion, and they could have called that on about three or four different guys that time. There was motion all over the field. Take your choice there. So another miscue here. Those are the kinds of things we would expect in a spring game. But uh, it's going to be an interesting offensive possession for Donahoe. They've kind of settled down defensively. Let's see if they can settle down offensively and get something going on the offensive side of the ball. These two teams have met 27 times since 1978, including uh, uh, Wadley leading 20 to seven in the series, including the last seven. Last time two schools played uh, was in 2009 during the regular season. It looks like they will be doing it again in 2014. Region opponents in class 1A region five, along with Appalachian, as well as Raglan, Shades Mountain, Christian, TCC, and Winterboro. And TCC and Raglan were both uh, pretty impressive earlier today here at JSU. Fake the sweep, hand it off up the middle and uh, on the carry, getting back to the line of scrimmage and uh, barely forward again on the carry is number three there. And that is uh, Steed 
But you look at Avery over there for Wadley, and he is getting some work done. I'm not sure where he's the most impressive on the offensive side or the defensive side. He's been awfully impressive on both sides of the ball there. And these last couple of drives, he's made a couple of monster hits from his linebacker. He's that typical prototype middle linebacker. As uh, he just kind of sits in there, a big, strong guy, and uh, he, he does a great job of filling the hole there. And now Donahoe starting out second down at about 13 now. Second and long for the Falcons up under center is Brown. As he'll take the snap, drop straight back, rolling to the right side now, flips it out here in the flats. The catch is made, and to the 45 yard line being spilled there is going to be Myrick positive play there and there's Ben Myrick again as we talked about just uh, just such a valuable player for this Donahoe team when you need a big play need some positive yards kind of your go to guy reminds me a lot if you want to make a college comparison reminds me of maybe a Kevin Norwood kind of guy mm -hmm. for that played at Alabama that you know when they needed a big play they always seemed to go to him and it, that seems to be with Donahoe over the last couple of years when they kind of needed that big play and people kind of forgot about number 34. Right. Here comes Ben Myrick and makes the big play for Donahoe. One of those players that the opposing coaches say you have to account for every play because he can make some things happen. Brown rolls out left this time, flips it out there. The catch is made by Foster, 45-yard line, and he will take it down to the 40, just outside. We'll mark it at the 41-yard line. Good-looking play there, and Brown with a great job of turning the shoulders and putting that football on the money. Foster with a great catch and then uh, doing, knowing what to do with the pigskin after he pulls it in. Yeah, look at that, reaching up to grab that ball and then tucks it away and get some positive yards and we're seeing a glimpse there of why this guy's stock is rising as far as college prospects go this will be one of the top players in the state and look at that I mean he's six foot four and about 240 pounds they line him up Tommy wide receiver again the defensive backs don't like that matchup as Brown rolls out right this time flips it in the flats the catch is made 35 yard line and down to the 30 and you see Brown getting in a little bit of rhythm here. Good pass on the outside, pulled in by Steed. And they're starting to hit the flats and finding some success. They really are. Uh, Brown taking over for Carr, who was the starting quarterback last year for Donahoe. And so this is kind of his first action. And we're seeing on the offensive side what we saw on the defensive side with Donahoe. Kind of took him a series or two to get on track. But now they've got that rhythm, as you talked about, Tommy, starting to really flow now inside the 30. Good-looking drive here by the Falcons. Brown with a shotgun again. Two wide outs are either way. As he'll take the snap and hand it off up the middle. Not a lot there. Ball on the turf. The fumble is still on the ground. And let's see who's got it. And out of nowhere comes Foster to recover. It's going to be a big loss on the play. And bring up second down and long for the Falcons. Chandler Collins wears number 82, but they bring him into the backfield and line him up this time. Just a missed communication on, well, not really a miscommunication on the handoff. He got a tough hit there by Wadley, and the ball comes loose. But fortunately, Foster for Donahoe was there to fall on the loose football. John David Fordham on the stop there. He jars the football loose. Foster gets back on it. But now it's second down and a long way to go for the Donahoe Falcons. Tried to sneak in a run there after having some success in the flats. Fake it short, looking deep. Got a man down there, and it is going to be caught inside the 10-yard line and into the end zone. Nice catch by Steed, and Donahoe is on the board. 40-plus yard touchdown pass. Nice-looking play there from Trey Brown to Garrett Steed, and Steed ran a really nice route this time. You look at the, uh, the play here. There's the pump fake. And then look at the nice route run by Steed. Steed just runs by the defender and then turns on the afterburner, showing some nice speed. Watch him catch this pass. Then there's two Wadley defenders, and he outruns them to the end zone. Touchdown, Donahoe, and a great-looking drive by the Falcons, Tommy. They answer and come back to end within a point of tying it up, but what a throw by Brown. Never breaking stride, just a great executed play. And now Donahoe deciding to go for the extra point, it would appear. And on for the PAT is going to be number 17, and that is Mitchell Baker. Freshman coming in to kick again. Now, Wadley's holding their hands up. They can't rush, but they're deciding, well, we can distract him, can't we? Kind of like basketball. Yeah, you know, really? stand behind the backboard. We'll hold our hands up here, and we'll try to do whatever we can. I don't know if they can sway back and forth. I don't That's know what Cameron the exact here. rules are here, but they're going to put the hands up and try to, to provide some kind of distraction anyway. They're discussing it out there. I think the officials may be discussing it. Give them that. a delay of game. 
the T was what was missing, and uh, now they throw it out there late. So Donahoe now the extra point uh, going to be moved back and in essence be a 25-yard extra point. And now they get a player onto and the field. That's Collins coming in late. So I'm assuming they only had 10. Collins pretty important there because he's the guard. Yeah. Brown now, to, the Brown hands go up. Let's see if they do the, the wave. No. Nope. Hey, great nice kick. Oh, that yeah. is great. Freshman Mitchell Baker. Looks like they may have a kicking prospect coming soon at Donahoe. About Good two thirds hit. way up the up the bleachers there. We are tied up seven apiece. Looking back at that touchdown, you see Brown. Throwing it long, Steve finds his way in the end zone, and we are tied here on the TV 24 Gridiron Challenge. When it comes to great tasting barbecue, nobody does it better than Dad's Barbecue. Dad's Barbecue is slow, hickory cooked to perfection, and Dad's menu includes a wide selection of popular items such as our smoked chicken sandwich, ribs, salads, and the best chicken fingers in town. And Dad's does catering, so let Dad's take care of your next party, family reunion, church function, or any type of get-together. Family owned since 1985. Dad's Barbecue, with locations in Anniston and Rainbow City. We are celebrating all month long at Buster Mall Chevrolet during our 67th anniversary sale. And to celebrate, we are offering huge discounts on all new Chevys, like the new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Save over $7,500 off MSRP. Or the all-new 2014 Chevy Impala, only $25,660. So don't miss our 67th anniversary sale at Buster Mall Chevrolet at our original downtown location in Heflin for the difference worth driving since 1947. You see Kamari Avery there, ready to get this Wadley offense going. We are tied at seven with a minute 32 left here in the first. Wadley and Donahoe, class 1A matchup. Hi, this is Vernon Thomas, gentlemen. manager, just Sonny King, Toyota, and Sia. And this right up the gut. This time, Donahoe surrounds him. He's still able to get five yards, but uh, i tell you what, tough man to bring down. You know, Tommy, you and I, down through the years, all of our years of broadcasting high school football, we're familiar. We do a lot of small school football, and we both went to relatively small schools. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that just because a guy's playing at a 1A school or a 2A school doesn't mean that they're not talented. We're seeing a great example today. There's some talented football players for both of these teams today. And I think the folks that maybe don't watch a lot of 1A football maybe getting their eyes open today that, that uh, there can be some really good football players down at the 1A level. College scouts realize that as well. You can find some phenomenal athletes. Fordham rolls out right, then throws a strike, but unable to hang on. That's going to be Freeman. Goes through the wicket there, brings up a third down at about five. Wadley with a lot of weapons on offense. You got Freeman out there at wide receiver. And they'll bring him to the backfield at times. You got none at, uh, is a weapon as well. And then, of course, Avery and the quarterback Fordham is showing us some nice things as well. So they've, they've got a lot of different options offensively that they can go to. That's the one thing you see about Wadley. I, I'm with you. There's so many weapons uh, that they've been able to, to show this afternoon. And uh, they are a good-looking offense. Going to be illegal procedure there. Freeman scampers through, but uh, they'll get him with five. And, you know, you talk about Wadley. I, I think if you're Coach Ken Fordham, the thing you've got to work on is, is consistency. Last season, uh, there were times where they looked like a million dollars. There were nights where Coach Fordham just never could get the offense going. And, uh, you know, they, they struggled to, to win two or three games in a row, and that really uh, hurt them last, uh, last fall. You know, we saw them here at the uh, Spring Jamboree here last year. They were a very, very young football team, and I think that's where that inconsistency comes in. It can't, it's kind of showed up. They're more experienced this year, so I think we're going to see some of that inconsistency maybe go away in the 2014 season. Two split outs will go right for Fordham. He's got Avery back behind him, and he'll take the snap, give it to Avery left side, met in the hole, still able to fall forward to the 35-yard line. But again, defense for Donahoe stepping it up these last two possessions. I think Donahoe has learned from that first series that when Avery hits the hole, you better hang on for a ride and you better get as many of those maroon helmets there as you can to get on that guy because he is not usually going to go down on the first hit. Game clock winding down here in the first and uh, Wadley facing a fourth down. So they'll let the uh, first period draw to a close and have a little opportunity to think it over, John. 
Teams have been using this in a variety of ways. Some have been treating it like a regular quarter. Some in the first couple of games were treating it like a half. And so they were using the last two minutes like it was the last two minutes of a half and trying to run their two-minute offense. But Wadley here just treating that like a normal quarter. Very competitive first quarter here. Wadley and Donahoe tied at seven. Of course, the TV 24 Gridiron Challenge presented by Calhoun County Chamber of Commerce. Calhoun County, a natural attraction. Learn more at visitcalhouncounty.com. When it comes to the financing of your home, experience counts. At Jackson Mortgage Company, put that experience to work for you. There's a reason homeowners across East Alabama have chosen Jackson Mortgage Company since 1994. Jackson Mortgage Company is a full-service mortgage company offering VA, FHA, and conventional financing with competitive rates. Let Jackson Mortgage Company put their experience to work for you. And you remember, if you need a home loan, call my daddy. For an affordable private Christian education, choose Cusa Christian School in Gadsden. Cusa Christian offers a Bible-based biblical worldview curriculum for a solid spiritual foundation while also providing the highest standards in academics, activities, and athletics. Cusa Christian can accommodate your child from daycare through the 12th grade with 90% of our graduates going to college and 63% of them receiving scholarships. Plus, our nine athletic programs compete in the Alabama High School Athletic Association. For more information, call our office or visit online. The physical therapists and athletic trainers at Dr. Clinton Ray Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy are dedicated to bringing the patients of Northeast Alabama the most advanced therapy treatments available to return you to your active lifestyle. Dr. Clinton Ray and Dr. Jeffrey Lawler are both committed to providing excellent surgical care of your orthopedic needs. The doctors and therapy staff have the desire and experience to treat you like a world-class athlete, but with a personal touch. Hi, my name is Reverend Jeffrey C. Williams, the owner and licensed funeral director of Anderson Funeral Services. At Anderson Funeral Services, we are compassion and caring individuals committed to providing quality and professional service at affordable prices. We are where service begins and never ends, and love is what love does. Anniston Funeral Services offers affordable services to meet any need for all families. Anniston Funeral Services, 630 South Wilmer Avenue, where service begins and never ends. Once again, TV 24, Gridiron Challenge, presented by Calhoun County Chamber of Commerce. Calhoun County, beautiful natural attraction. Learn more at visitcalhouncounty.com. You and I were talking, John, what a beautiful view we have here this afternoon. I'll tell you what, this has to be, speaking of Calhoun County being a natural attraction, this has to be one of the most beautiful views from the press box and the sky boxes here at Burgess Snowfield in all of college football. I mean, I know there's some great places like at Washington and places like that, but I don't know that anybody in college football has got a got a quite a view like this one here. Our, my first trip up here into the press box, and what a beautiful view we have here this afternoon. And beautiful game so far, 7-7. Wadley Donahoe doing battle here. Wadley back on offense. They'll go to the eye this time. Hand off, that's Avery right side, cuts it back against the grain and gets out across the 35. Quarterback in the game, Kobe Nunn that time, replaces Fordham. He'll get some of the time at signal caller. And I'm like you, John, that's a good looking athlete in Nunn. Nunn, I think, played a little quarterback here last year in the uh, spring jamboree. Big hole opened up that time initially by the Wadley offensive line, closed very quickly, but. You don't need to give Avery much. He's a big guy, but don't be deceived by his speed because the guy's got some speed as well. We'll see that, I think, before the game's over. Back to the eye again. Nunn runs the option left side, pitches back, and Avery's got it. Runs over a defender, a second one, and will carry him close to first down yardage. Wow. He is a tough young man to bring down. He'll pick up out to the 39-yard line. As you see right here, great option. None, the option pitch to the left side, turns it back, sheds that defender, and then he is met and just continues the leg drive, John. That's what's so impressive. It's so hard to bring down, kind of like uh, uh, tackling a bulldozer here. You know, Tommy, you know as well as anybody, down through the years, Wadley's had some tremendous running backs. This guy looks like he's going to be the next great one at Wadley. Bobble on the snap, but none keeps it left side. He's got first down yardage across the 45, and he'll be spun out of bounds. At about the 46-yard line, that is good for the Wadley first down. That time looked like a bobble on the snap. I don't think the play was designed to go to the outside, but none 
very instinctively just took the uh, took the football and just made what he could. And good run on the left side by none picks up the first down. You know, the, the weather has not been a factor, even though they had a lot of rain this morning. With this turf here, there's great drainage. I think in most surfaces like this, Tommy, you can have maybe three inches of rain even in an hour, and it'll be dry in 20 minutes. So this this field probably is totally dry. Bobble again. None picks it up. This time he's in trouble. He's not going anywhere. Foster standing his ground, and he waits on him there, brings him down. So couple of bobbled snaps here you see with the new quarterback and again you go back that's spring football and uh, that's what the coaches have to struggle through certainly is and this been kind of a drive killer they've had a couple of potentially big games there on offense that have kind of been wiped out because of the juggling the football there so Justin Foster you see him there that is a linebacker and a half he appears to go at uh, defensive end at times move him around and uh, you've got to account for him because he can make some things happen on the defensive side of the football and off Avery up the middle he'll get to midfield drop there I don't think they ever brought him down John but they will blow the play down inside the midfield stripe at the 49 gonna bring up a third down and about five I'll tell you what over the last three days uh, I've already seen 13 high school football teams play so far and we're gonna see a lot more before the day is over but as I mentioned earlier he's the best looking athlete I've seen on, on any of the 13 teams so far he is uh, he is quite a standout and again you look at Foster on the other side and that is uh, that's a couple of talented young men that you'll you'll hear their name a, a, a lot this fall for Wadley and Donahoe third down we'll call it about five Runs the option left side. None's in trouble. He's going to be popped and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive stand again by the Donahoe Falcons. And that's going to be Parker Morgan in to apply the hit. None tried to cut it up, and that's where Morgan was waiting. And you see picture perfect tackle drives him to the turf. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Morgan playing that defensive end. Nobody blocked him, and he filled the hole and just laid a crushing hit. And that's going to force fourth down. Here's another 30-yard punt. So it looks like with the 30-yard punt, they'll get the ball to about the 19-yard line, I think. And uh, that's where they'll place it, just inside the 20. So just about a full 80 yards to go for Dono here on offense. Burgess Snowfield, Jacksonville State University. Clock rolling with 11-18 remaining here in this matchup. We are tied at 7. For Coach Shannon Felder, John, you got to start thinking how many times you're going to get the football here. You got 11 minutes left in that running clock. You got to make something happen. And we've seen some very good throws from the quarterback position by Trey Brown, including that 40 plus yard touchdown pass to Garrett Steve. So we know they can throw the football. And you got to be thinking here with a weapon like Justin Foster, maybe trying to put the ball in his hands a little bit more on this drive. We'll see what Coach Felder does here as they begin at their own 20. Two split outs will go to the right. Shotgun formation. Two split outs to the left. Quick hitch on the outside. The catch is made. Splits defenders across the 25, across the 30. Breaking a tackle out to the 34-yard line. Good run on the right side. Mitchell Baker. Not only can he kick, he can bring it out for first down yardage there. And uh, they made a change there, and they put Chandler Collins in at quarterback, number 82. And immediately he comes into the game, his first play at quarterback, and throws a nice green pass, a strike out there. And uh, a good completion there, a gain of about 14 yards on the play. And we're going to see again, looks like Collins still staying in at quarterback with Ben Myrick at tailback. Two split outs right as he'll take the snap, fakes it, rolls out right in trouble, throwing it deep, got his man down there. The catch is made. What a throw and catch out here across midfield. And it's pulled in by the freshman, Wilson Russell. Nice throw by Collins. Not Russell Wilson, Wilson Russell. Well, inside the 50 yard line so two good throws in a row here by the Donahoe Falcons as they bring uh, Chandler Collins to the game and he's provided quite a spark himself at the quarterback position for the Falcons think about Collins that time he was getting hit as he delivered that football and put it on the money first down and 10 Donahoe on the move Collins shotgun snap will take it flip it in the flats the catch is not made this time intended out here for Baker once again It'll bring up second down. Dangerous play because if Kobe Nunn had had his head up, he was focused on making the tackle and making the hit. He'd have looked up. He could have snagged that one and maybe taken it to the house. A dangerous tip pass there, but good defense by Kobe Nunn of Wadley. Game brought to you today by RMC as well as Superior Hyundai, the Calhoun County Commission, Jackson Mortgage Company, and Alabama Power. 7-7 our score you see there. 
See the Cleburne County Tigers already uh, dressed and kind of going over behind the stadium and working out, getting ready for the next game. Cleburne County and B.B. Comer coming up next here at the Challenge. Collins backs pass, rolls out left side. He's in trouble, breaks the first tackle, but not the second, and he's going to be drilled down. And now a late hit will be called against the Wadley Bulldog defense. A little over aggressive there, and that's going to cost them after a big defensive stop. Luke Brown and Keyshawn Daniel were over there and played it perfectly, but just a little bit extra hit there, and we're going to see a late hit. That'll be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down because that will be a personal foul, and that is going to be a huge, huge turn of events for Wadley. They had the big stop there, and then all of a sudden the late hit is going to provide a first down, it looks like, for Donahoe. So you look after that big defensive play and you, you feel like you've got the stop there and got them where you want them. But yet the penalty keeps this drive alive. Collins that time he, he rolls out and he tries to spin away and defense is there. But again that late hit. And that's going to cost the Bulldogs. Moves the ball down to the 40 yard line. Donahoe now first down and 10. 10 24 remaining here in this game. They actually called that an unsportsmanlike conduct was the, the call there. Nonetheless, the result is still a first down, and they'll have the ball at the 40-yard line. Now the officials are discussing I think maybe where exactly to place the ball. As they will discuss it on the far boundary. Talking over there to the chain gang on the far side. And that's what I thought. I think there that is, if it was a personal foul late hit, that's an automatic first down. Right. I think on this unsportsmanlike conduct, that is not an automatic first down, and they are about a yard short. And that's what the discussion is. Pistols go over and change that, that it's not an automatic first down, and they needed about 15 and a half mm -hmm. for the first down. They got 15, so it's third down and less than a yard. Myrick in the backfield with Collins. Foster to the near side. Third and about a half yard. He'll take it, leave it with Myrick. Myrick is hit, dives to the 40-yard line. I don't know that he got there, John. I don't think he did. He had to go really inside the 40, and Tommy, they're going to mark that just outside the 40, virtually no gain. So fourth down and about a yard here. I don't think there's any question in the spring game what Shannon Felder is going to do here. You look at the defensive penetration here. They are waiting on Myrick when he takes it. And three Bulldogs meet him there and drive him down. It's now fourth down at about a half yard. Big play here for both teams with this game tied 7-7. Fourth down, less than a yard, just outside the 40. You got Myrick, you got Foster over here at a wing. Collins goes up under center this time, and he'll quarterback sneak it, and he's got the first down. Collins calls his own number, takes it inside the 40, and he'll pick up about three yards, mark it at the 37-yard line. Good blocking up the middle there. And Collins able to rattle the chains here as you see here up under center just takes it why the defenders really had not even gotten into the stance yet so good call and Donahoe going to keep the possession alive first down and 10 37 yard line back to the shotgun goes Collins he's got Myrick back behind him he'll take it roll out right gets a block from Myrick throws in the flats and catches made 32 yard line then slipping defenders down to the 30 Good catch out there on the outside, and that is going to be number 21. And uh, we still do not have a name to match that number. But he makes the catch, eludes the first defender, and then brought down at about the 29-yard line. Gain of eight. We'll call it second down and two for the Donahoe Falcons. And Collins has delivered the football on the money. I'm going to guess that that's maybe Thomas Conley. We have a number 24, and I don't see a 24. Who's a wide receiver and defensive back. Well, I do see a 24, so scratch that. But nonetheless, a nice throw and catch there, especially a nice throw, another nice throw by Chandler Collins. Good look at Collins right there. He drops back, fakes the short pass, going to throw it long into triple coverage. Defense is there, and it's picked off. Good play, staying home for the Wadley Bulldogs, and that's going to be Drake pulling in the INT, and Wadley will take over. It was a nice looking pass, probably the best looking pass that he's thrown all game long. He's looking for Justin Foster down inside the five. Nice spiral with again the the uh, play action, the pump there, double pump, but he was just off target with it. Three white jerseys in the neighborhood and is intercepted inside the five. Again, looking for Foster there, but just a little bit off the mark. And the good news is that's really kind of like a punt. They'll have the ball 
inside the five yard line. So Donahoe able to pin them deep here with 821 to go. The pump fake burned Wadley earlier this time. Bulldogs stay at home. But they have 96 yards away from pay dirt. They'll give it off to Avery right side. Avery meets Foster, splits through him out across the 10 yard line, out to close to the 12 yard line. And the clock rolls with 8-10 remaining. Well, when you want to blast your way off the goal line, uh, no better way to do it than with Kamari Avery. Just couldn't give you a lot of uh, room for error there when you're trying to make the tackle. And uh, look, you got five defenders there along for the ride. And Avery just bowls his way out there for a gain of eight, second down and two. You see the eye formation there and movement along the front. Both teams will point at each other. But I believe Wadley may have jumped on the interior way, but the officials on this side indicates Donahoe. Fingers pointing both directions. Wadley players are pointing east. Donahoe players are pointing west. But it's going to be Donahoe that's going to be called for the infraction. And that will give an automatic first down to Wadley. An offside called against the Falcons. So after a run by Avery and an offside penalty, Wadley moving it out from the shadows of their own goalpost and uh, move it out to the 17 yard line. 744 remaining. High backfield once again. And off up the middle and not a whole lot there. Back in quarterback now and that is going to be uh, Connor Fordham is back in. Well, if you're Wadley, what you'd like to do is get a nice long drive here, 725 and counting to go in the game and maybe end with a touchdown. We'll have an official timeout. I think they're going to. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, coming up Gimpy that time, John David Fordham. He's going to have to check out across the way as he will make his way to the sideline. They were motioning toward the Donahoe sideline for somebody to come out, but it was actually a Wadley player that was heard. And, like Fordham's going to go over and sit on the bench over there, pull his helmet off, and it's like maybe a turned ankle over there. Second down, about seven yards to go. High backfield. Motion to the far side. They'll throw the quick hitch out there. The catch is made. Trying to split defenders and doing it is Freeman, and he will scamper out close to first down. Yardage across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Brings up a third down a yard. Parker Morgan of Donahoe almost made a big play. He had his hands up. Very nearly intercepted that screen pass. That's how quickly he was in the backfield. But uh, he was able to get the pass over his hands and get a nice completion out there. And a makeable third down now coming up here for Wadley. There have been several times on that quick uh, pitch to the outside that uh, the Donahoe Falcons' hands have been all around. It just hadn't been able to bat one down yet. Third and a couple. Movement in the backfield. And that's going to cost them five. Full back that time. Out of the stance a little early. Cost them five. Goes back from third and two now to third and seven. Third and two, you know that uh, number 34 is probably going to carry the pigskin. Third and seven, you're not so certain. We mentioned last year both of these teams in the 1A playoffs. Wadley, you know, they were the number three team out of Region 4. They lost on the road in the first round to McKenzie, 63 to 12. Not a very good showing in the first round. Donahoe lost a heartbreaker at home. They were the runner up out of class 1A Region 7, but they had a very tough Barry team. Tank Hollingsworth, all time leading rusher in state high school history, coming in. That was a close game. Barry was able to escape with a 20 to 14 victory. Both of these teams in the 1A playoffs. And what I've seen here today, that region that they're in, I think both of these teams are going to be playoff contenders again in 2014. It'll be a fun region to watch, no doubt. Third and long. Quick pitch out here to the, to the slot receiver. Nothing doing. What a play. Out to make the hit is going to be Garrett Steed. And he will stop him and in his tracks and brings up fourth down. And you're going to have to see Wadley uh, punt it back and get Donahoe one more shot here. Great reaction by Steed as he just comes charging in, makes a sure-handed tackle for a loss. And we've seen Steed with a touchdown catch on offense, but doing it as we see a lot of times in 1A, most of these guys play both ways. Equally as impressive as a cornerback that time coming up to make the hit and bring up the punting situation. The good news here for Donahoe is excellent field position. The punts are only 30 yards, so with the line of scrimmage being basically there at the 18-yard line, they're going to have the ball inside Wadley territory at the Wadley 48 to begin this drive with 5.06 to go. And same thing that we talked about with Coach Fordham. Coach Felder right here would love to see about a five-minute and five-second drive ending at a touchdown. That's what he'd like to do here. 
In at quarterback, Trey Brown back in there for Donahoe. Split outs are either way. Sends Foster in motion, sweeping it to him right side. He's got Myrick in front. Foster splits the defenders far side. 40, 35, 30, down the far sideline. It won't take five minutes, more like five seconds for Foster to find the end zone. I think Coach Felder may have been sandbagging just a little bit in this game because that's really the first time that we've seen Justin Foster take the ball to the outside on the tall sweep. We did have not seen him touch the ball from the tailback position very much. He gets the ball on the tall sweep this time. He gets it to the outside and then shows his speed. Look at the big guy. About 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 235 or 40 pounds. Does a nice job of setting up his blocks. And look who set the block up. Ben Myrick, guy making plays. And then he goes down the sideline for the touchdown for Donahoe. And uh, I'm going to say Coach Felder may be holding out on us a little bit and showing us all that Justin Foster can do on offense. He also saw a great block on the outside. Mitchell Baker wide out as he was able to occupy a defender. A good speed down the far side by Justin Foster. Baker now on for the extra point. No rush once again, and he will drill it. On top of the field house, all the way to the back of the field house. That thing's going to bounce all the way off almost in the parking lot. Good place kick there. A 48 yard touchdown run by Justin Foster. Foster rumbling down the right side, gets the good block, turns on the afterburners, and he will take Donahoe to a 14 7 lead in the final moments of this game here at the TV 24 Gridiron Challenge. This is Vernon Thomas, General Manager, Sonny King, Toyota, and Scion. And this May, that's right, we're racing for a record. We're going to break all the new sales records this month, and you're going to be the winner. You can save $5,000 off MSRP on all new Camry, Tondras, Highlanders, Benzes, Avalon. We got so many deals, we don't have time to talk about it. Come experience the King difference at all new Sonny King, Toyota, and Scion on a new motor mile in Oxford, Alabama. Where the customer is king. Downey Drug, serving Calhoun County for four decades. Recently voted the best pharmacy in Calhoun County. We emphasize personal service, answering your questions, filling your prescriptions in minutes, not hours. Being locally owned and operated, your money stays in your community. Our prices have been compared to all area pharmacies, and once again, we win. Isn't it time you experience the best pharmacy in Calhoun County? Downey Drug, Welburn Plaza, Alexandria. Back at Burgess Snowfield, it's football time for the young and the old here at JSU. And great uh, crowd on hand today, John. And uh, again, everybody, it, it's football season year-round, isn't it? it, it it's Alabama. It's I it. mean, we love this. Look at the crowd here. Nice crowd from Donahoe. Uh, nice crowd over there from uh, Wadley as well, making their way up from Randolph County. And uh, sun splash afternoon here at Burgess Snowfield. Great uh, time to come on out. We've still got, uh, what, after this game, five more games. So come on out, $7 gets you all five of those for the rest of the day. And to think about it, uh, you're worried about it, the heat. It is not a factor here today. Here's Fordham on the keeper around the right side, and he's going to be tracked down and dropped. Good play out here. Samuel Garner able to uh, bring down, actually, that is uh, Dakota Brown in at quarterback on that play. Good stop by Garner. Really impressed by the tackling of these guys from Donahoe. We've seen two sure open field tackles in a row on the last two possessions. Garrett Steed and then Samuel Garner that time. You know, you miss those tackles, they're going to get a lot of extra yards. Sure-handed, open field, nice form tackling by Donahoe. And uh, that could have been a much bigger play, only about two yards for the game. Second down and eight. Ball marked at the 32-yard line. Split outs. Two will come to the near side. Two go to the far. And Dakota Brown will load up the shotgun. Avery along his side. Motion man. They'll give it on the speed sweep left side. Trying to bounce outside. Nothing doing. Donahoe defense stepping up big as they will bring down Kobe Nunn. That time on the stop, number 62, Parker Morgan read it. And picture perfect tackle on the far side. Morgan has locked down that end over there. He's made three or four big plays, especially here in this second quarter for Donahoe. And now a really huge play coming up here for Wadley on offense. 340 and counting to go in the game. And they're facing a third down and about eight and a half here. So 
Uh, we're going to see, I guess, maybe another pass play, and we'll see that timeout. You get one per quarter, and Wadley, as important as this play is, going to go ahead and take that timeout. And we'll take the timeout. Donahoe wanting to come up with a big third down stop here, and John uh, Donahoe really instrumental in putting this together today as far as uh, this event here at JSU. Yeah, we uh, Donahoe and Anniston have really been the two teams, two schools putting this together in our pregame show. Of course, we interviewed Shannon Felder of Donahoe and Eddie Bullock of Anniston uh, talking about this great event, and it's been a success so far as we rode a break here at JSU Stadium. We're making a new Honda at Sunny King Honda more affordable than ever with low, low lease payments all month long. Lease a new 14 Accord LX for only $199 a month. Lease the all-new 14 Civic LX for only $159 a month. We have a great selection of certified used Honda, all with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Sunny King Honda exit 188 off Interstate 20 on Highway 78 East in Oxford, where customer satisfaction is king something this beautiful you think it must be expensive but sometimes things aren't what you think they are in fact you might be surprised at how reasonable our prices are we know that value is really important to people in this area so we work hard to provide personal caring service that is affordable kl brown memory chapel where our prices are as attractive as our facility 14-7, our score here, JSU, and uh, down the sideline, here's Chase Robinson. All right, thanks, Tommy. Down here with a couple of very special guests from Donahoe. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. I'm Jan Hurd, president and head of school. I'm Karen Hester, dean of students. All right, now, Donahoe is known for their tradition and excellence, not only in academics, but athletics. Talk about uh, what contributes to that. Well, of course, we have a wonderful faculty and staff. Uh, we're so lucky to have Coach Felder as our coach, um, a man of his quality and integrity. Uh, was I feel honored to have had the pleasure of hiring him about 10 years ago, I believe. And uh, he is um, not only a good coach on the field, but he is a good coach in life for our, our boys. And, and they're gonna take away some memories that will be um, long lasting. I don't know, it, it takes a lot to put something like this on and y'all are with Aniston are putting this thing on. Talk about what uh, went into that. Well, I would have to uh, just rely on uh, the information from Coach Felder because he just took it and ran with it. Uh, he started working probably eight months ago uh, with uh, the coach from Anniston and uh, they have talked with the other schools and gotten uh, the buy-in from them and uh, they've uh, talked with of course TV24 and JSU but it is a big endeavor. It's probably one of the biggest things that uh, Donahoe has had the privilege of being a part of. All right, and as the Dean of Students, talk about some stuff that's going on at the Donahoe School. Oh, everything. We, um, our Fine Arts Department just finished a great production of Beauty and the Beast. Our athletic season is winded down for the summer, for the spring, but of course the Jamboree really starts the fall season. Volleyball tryouts are in swing, and the cheerleader tryouts were last week. All right, All right. thank you very much for joining us. All right, Chase, appreciate that. You, you see Avery throw it long on the halfback pass. A flag comes in as Donahoe will haul in the interception and let them sort that out. Uh, again, not a bad-looking pass from Avery from the old left-handed side. I mean, Avery's under pressure here at the last minute, heaves it, and look at this pass. I mean, he threw that thing 40 yards in the air, intercepted by guess who? Myrick. Ben, ben Myrick. There's a flag on the play. The officials are discussing this. We'll see what the call is going to be here. But, wow, what a throw. Just impressed by the throw there by Avery. And the deep, it's going to be pass interference called against Donahoe. So that'll wipe that out. But what an impressive throw by Avery. Just for the last minute, I'm going to chunk it down there. And a perfect 40-yard spiral in the air. Right on target, really, too, really, even though it was intercepted. You know, it's easy to spot an athlete. And uh, tell you what, you got one there at 34 in white. Great throw. And it's going to keep this drive alive after the uh, penalty. 3.08 remaining, 14-7, Donahoe on top. But Wadley's drive will stay alive as that will move it after the penalty out to the 47-yard line. 
just in case you're wondering, no ties in this game. Now, the Alabama High School Athletic Association in regular season games, games cannot end in a tie. There has to be overtime until you have a winner. But in this particular game, there will, there can be the possibility of a tie if you're thinking that. But Donahoe's not thinking that, as that's the best play they've had on Avery all day. Walter Montgomery knifes through a hole there. You see him there, 54, shedding the block, wrapping up the legs and bringing him down. Avery stopped for a minimal gain, maybe about a yard. We'll call it second down and nine. Time getting to be an issue. Now, let's keep in mind that Wadley has already used their timeout for the quarter, so no timeouts left. 2.35 to go, and they've still got 53 yards to cover. Connor Fordham in at quarterback will run the option left side, keep it up, and go into the middle of the line, and we'll get close to midfield. But it's going to bring up a third down. And looks like about seven yards to go. Right at the 50-yard line, key third down. Of course, four down territory with only two minutes to go in the game and no timeouts. They'll have two downs here to get seven yards. So this is pretty much the ball game right here coming up on these next couple of plays. Game clock, you see it winding under two minutes there. 14-7 our score. Donahoe up by a touchdown. Wadley 50 yards away from tying it up. Motion man near side. He'll get the call. It's none. Now he's going to step back and throw it down the middle of the field. He's got his man down there. The catch is made at the 15. Into the 13. Now down to the 11-yard line is Devin Freeman. What a call by Ken Fordham. It looks like the speed sweep. None stops two steps back. You see him throw it under pressure. And on the money out here to Freeman. Third and seven, and what a great pass play. Coaches draw that up. That's exactly the way that they draw it up. Nice throw, nice catch, great execution. Freeman takes it down just outside the 10-yard line to the 11 with 1.35 to go. The clock did stop because of the first down. Coach Fordham, what, about four guys throwing passes here this afternoon now. Two split outs near side. They'll pitch it back. Freeman's got a gap. Turns on the speed and goes into the end zone. Freeman goes in, and now Wadley within a point of tying it up with a minute 20 remaining. You know, we talked about the different uh, weapons that they have, and we talked about that they can bring Freeman into the backfield. We saw that early in the game, and this time they take Avery out, put Freeman at tailback, toss sweep, and he was not touched. 11 yards for the touchdown for Wadley. Great seal blocking on the outside, and it opens up the gate, and Freeman goes in untouched. Wadley is going to go for the lead here. They will put it all on this one with a minute 20 remaining. Down by one. They're going to go for two. Bulldogs come to the line. You got to think. Why not? You got to think 34 will be involved in this one. You think? I'd give him a. I'd toss it to him and give him a run pass option here. What I'd do. They hand it off up the middle. He's hit once, twice, and still trying to go forward. He's not going to get there. Donahoe comes up with a stop. And they will hold him out of the end zone about six inches shy. And the score remains 14-13. And a great crowd here on the home side from Donahoe, and they just erupt there. You think these spring games don't mean a lot? Look at the reaction of these Donahoe players and the fans in the stands as well. Nice crowd here from Donahoe as their defense stands up on the two-point conversion against the big guy, Avery. We mentioned having to put a lot of maroon helmets on him, and they do at that time gang tackling by the Falcons, and they hold out Avery for the two-point conversion try with 120 to go. Avery hit and then spins to try to come back around, and you see a big stop in there leading the charges. Reeves Nelson, the sophomore, as he will hold him out and denied the two-point conversion. And with a minute 20 remaining, it's Donahoe football. And Wadley has no opportunity for an onside kick here. No. There's no kicking. So they can't, they don't have that option. Just try to gotta force something here. You want to try to strip the football away or something like that if you're Wadley with 120 to go and no timeouts. They can milk the clock here. Great game, though. I tell you, it's brought to you again by RMC, Superior Hyundai, as well as the Calhoun County Commission, Jackson Mortgage Company, and Alabama Power. This has been a fun way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And it continues because lining up on the field now in the east end zone, the Cleburne County Tigers of Heflin. Coach Michael Short bringing the Tigers into the, this will be the first time they've played ever in the newly revamped uh, Burgess Snowfield. Back in the old days, they played Jacksonville here when Jacksonville High School used to play their games here. Minute 20 remaining. 
14 13 our score Wadley unable to convert on the two point conversion a minute 20 remaining and delay of game will move it back five now Donahoe will come on the field as a matter of fact the officials now <laughs> Cleveland County so anxious to get on here that the officials are telling the players from Cleveland County down in the east end zone that they need to back up there across the yellow line there for safety reasons, they want to get them off the field. That's how anxious these teams are to play here, Tommy. Hey, it's football time, man. It has been a blast here to be part of this game and looking forward to the rest of the afternoon here. And taking a knee. Tommy, I think you'll agree with me because of the, uh, the play on offense and on defense, but especially because of the big touchdown run, which was the difference of the game. Our ERA King Real Estate Player of the Game, Justin Foster of the Donahoe Falcons. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Foster played a tremendous game, had that huge touchdown run uh, to put uh, Donahoe up by seven. And then, uh, again, defensively, he was valuable as well. Had a great day today. So Justin Foster, our ERA King Realty Player of the Game. 14 to 13 looks like barring some kind of a Clint Sterner deal here. This is going to be a, uh, a victory for Donahoe unless we have a, a stumble like the Arkansas quarterback did in 98 in Knoxville. We, are, we will more than likely see a victory here by Donahoe at the Gridiron Classic. How's that for going way back well, in the time? Most of these players were not born at that <laughs> point, but I understand. <laughs> and taking a knee again is Collins. And that is going to wind it up. And, and you can tell, again, John, as you look down on this Donahoe sideline, there are fans on their feet. The Donahoe players excited. And uh, I think if you're a competitor, every time you take the field, it means something. You can hear this Donahoe crowd giving their approval. But Wadley also turning out a great effort here today. And they're throwing out our uh, TV 24 Dr. Clinton Way Awards to remember the Gridiron Classic T-shirts going out to the Donahoe cheerleaders, throwing that out to our fans here at the stadium. Of course, they will throw those out to the Wadley fans as well. Great game. This has been the best game of all the spring games we've seen with Donahoe beating Wadley 14-13. Tommy, Cleburne County and B.B. Comer, look at them over there. They yeah. are fired up, ready to get here and play for the first time ever at Burgess No Field. You see the teams meeting out there at midfield, and uh, again, they'll see each other again coming up this fall. Uh, as we get ready for the 2014 season. Final score 14-13. Donahoe wins the TV24 Gridiron Challenge. Back with more in just a moment. Ever have to unfriend someone on Facebook? No hard feelings or anything, but it was just time to move on. I want to help you unfriend your old car today and give you something to tweet about. Hey, this is Randy Visser from Talladega Ford with a deal everyone will like. Unfriend your old car today by trading it into us, and we'll give you five grand over Kelly Blue Book Fatty for it. Now that's a deal worth sharing. Still making payments on a car you hate? Trade it in, even if you owe way too much on it, and get in a nicer, newer car with little or even zero money down. Come see us and start taking your selfies in a nicer, newer car today. The physical therapists and athletic trainers at Dr. Clinton Ray Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy are dedicated to bringing the patients of Northeast Alabama the most advanced therapy treatments available to return you to your active lifestyle. Dr. Clinton Ray and Dr. Jeffrey Lawler are both committed to providing excellent surgical care of your orthopedic needs. The doctors and therapy staff have the desire and experience to treat you like a world-class athlete, but with a personal touch. 14-13, your final score, a one-point victory for the Donahoe Falcons. Now we uh, join Chase Robinson on the sideline. Thanks, Tommy. Down here with Coach uh, Felder. Coach came down to the very end. A big stop for your team to get this win. Uh, yeah, we needed a big stop, and uh, defense stepped up. You know, we uh, struggled a little bit on offense uh, early, and then we, we were able to get going a little bit. Uh, but we knew going into the season, uh, I mean, you know, going into the spring that uh, defense would be the backbone of our of our team, and you know we started slow defensively, but uh, once we got going, the guys loosened up and uh, played a good game, and uh, especially the goal line stance. Talk about the team this year, what you've seen from them this spring. Well, I mean, you know, uh, this team has worked hard all spring long. I told those guys I'm, I've been very pleased with our with our focus and with our work ethic. I, I think this team is a little bit ahead of what we were this time last year, and. I uh, got good leadership from our seniors, so I'm looking for, uh, you know, I'm looking for a good season for us this year. What are some things you saw today that you want to build on for next season? Well, I mean, I think offensively, uh, uh, we, we, we tried to spread the ball around. 
Uh, we didn't want to be predictable. You know, a lot of teams felt like we were going to get the ball to Justin every down, but we've got a lot of guys that can make some plays, and I thought today we've done a good job of spreading the ball around offensively and then defensively. Uh, we tried to play a lot of guys. We want to create some depth offensively and defensively, and, you know, that was our goal going into the game, to try to get some guys some reps so that we could get those guys some confidence, you know, and, gain, and the coaches gain some confidence in some guys, and I think today we were able to accomplish that. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Great game. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks a lot, Chase. Coach Shannon Felder. And, uh, again, I think, uh, John, when you look at this, things you can build on for the fall. And, uh, as he mentioned, defense uh, playing well and uh, able to come out here. after uh, A very impressive drive for Wadley to begin with, but the defense comes up big when it counts. He really did. And he mentioned something there that we kind of touched upon there. He he purposely said, you know, we a lot of people think that we're going to give the ball to Justin Foster every time. And so we wanted to show that we had some other weapons there. And they certainly did that. But when they needed the guy, when they needed Justin Foster, as we'll see here in just a moment, uh, he delivered with that 48 yard game winning touchdown run. He is tough all the way around. We saw him line up at uh, uh, a slot back from time to time and able to get some key blocks to spring some runners. But uh, when he came down, it was just a huge run by Justin Foster. Justin Foster, uh, the, the guy's about 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 about uh, 235 or 40 pounds. We see him at wide receiver with a nice catch there early in the game. And then here's the key play, the game-winning touchdown, the toss week, really one of the few times he touched the football the entire game. And you see not only the moves to get to the outside, but then the pure speed to get to the end zone and score the game-winning 48-yard touchdown run for the Donahoe Falcons. And Justin Foster, our ERA King Real Estate Player of the Game. He planted the right foot, turned it down the sideline. There you see the Cleburne County Tigers. They are slated to begin next, uh, John, and should be a, and a good matchup here between uh, Ch Cleburne County and B.B. Comer. Yeah, going to be a great game. Uh, Gerhard Mathingani, and uh, of course, also we'll have Carl Brady come along, and they'll bring you that game coming up. Our next game, our fourth game of the day here, Cleburne County and B.B. Comer next on TV 24.